Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is quick tips, canine bloat. Now, the condition commonly known as bloat is a serious, life-threatening medical emergency for dogs. Its scientific name is gastric dilatation volvulus, or GDV for short. GDV affects many breeds of dogs, specifically the large and giant breeds. But it is important for all dog owners to understand the risk factors that are associated with developing GDV, how to recognize it, and how they can prevent it at home. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Now there are two conditions that are commonly called bloat, and usually the term is used interchangeably. So the first condition is what we call food bloat, and this is generally when a dog just gorges itself on too much food. Usually it's an unattended bag of food or treats that the dog gets into accidentally. Um, and what happens with food bloat is their stomach just becomes so distended with food, becomes enlarged and it causes abdominal discomfort, pain, uh, lethargy, panting, and a fast heart rate usually. Generally, this condition is not an emergency unless you do see these signs. Food bloat is very different than GDV. And typically when veterinary professionals say bloat, they mean GDV. GDV, or gastric dilatation volvulus, is a much more severe condition than food bloat. It happens suddenly and progresses very quickly. In GDV, the stomach fills with food and gas, and the stomach will end up twisting on itself and just continue to distend with more and more gas. It can cause many complications, and it can rapidly become fatal and always requires an emergency veterinary visit. GDV is the condition that I will be referring to throughout this video, and I will be using the term GDV and bloat interchangeably, but I do mean GDV. Now, there are multiple factors that determine whether a dog will develop GDV or not. And typically, a dog that does develop GDV has multiple of these risk factors that we're going to discuss. The first risk factor is breed. Typically, large and giant breed dogs are predisposed to bloat, as well as dogs that have a deep and narrow chest. This is going to include the German Shepherd Dog, Standard Poodle, many breeds of Hounds, St. Bernards, Rottweilers, Great Danes, and many other breeds. However, if the conditions are right, any breed of dog can bloat, even small and toy breeds. As dogs get older, the likelihood that they will get bloat unfortunately increases. Dogs in a lean or ideal body condition are going to be more at risk of getting bloat than overweight or obese dogs. To learn how to find out if your dog is in an ideal body condition, check out my video, How to Body Condition Score. Dogs who have direct relatives, like a parent or a sibling, that have bloated are actually at higher risk of getting bloat themselves. If your large breed dog comes from a breeder, ask the breeder if they know the bloat history of the dogs that they have produced. This is a mark of a good breeder if they do know this history. Eating habits of a dog are a very important risk factor in determining if they will bloat or not. If a dog eats one large meal per day, they are at a much higher risk of getting GDV than dogs who eat smaller, more frequent meals. Dogs who eat very quickly or gorge their food are also at a higher risk. Dogs who eat from a dish that is elevated off the ground, which is a common prevention measure, are actually at a higher risk of getting bloat so this popular preventative measure is actually not preventing bloat at all. And dogs who exercise one hour before or one hour after eating may also be at an increased risk of bloat. Stress is a factor that has been described in the scientific literature as possibly contributing to bloat. Also, dogs with a stressful, fearful, nervous, or aggressive temperament may also be predisposed to bloat as well. 
Dogs who eat a dry diet are described in the scientific literature as being more likely to bloat than dogs who eat a canned or a fresh type diet. However, this might simply be because large and giant breed dogs are just more likely to eat kibble, so they're overrepresented in the literature. We're actually unsure of this at this time. However, if you pre-moisten a kibble with water, or if you add a canned or fresh food to that dry diet, it actually decreases the risk of your dog getting bloat. Dogs who eat diets with uh, fat or oil in the first four ingredients may also be at an increased risk of bloat as well. And diets that have much smaller kibble sizes may contribute to that gorging behavior that we talked about and may also contribute to bloat as well. And many pet parents have heard or believe that diets that contain grains such as corn, wheat, or soy are going to be associated with an increased risk of GDV. And this is actually a myth. It's not supported by any scientific evidence at all, so you definitely don't have to worry about these ingredients. Normally, when an animal or a human eats a meal, their stomach produces acid, mucus, and enzymes that are going to begin the process of digestion. During this process, gas is developed, and usually the animal will expel it through the mouth, which we commonly call belching. But with GDV, an animal can actually not do this. Their stomach becomes so full of food and gas that they can't get rid of it the stomach is going to dilate until the gas cap at the top of the stomach forces it to flip over or twist on itself. This is going to pinch off the esophagus shown in purple here, and it's going to pinch off the pylorus, which is the end of the stomach that leads into the small intestine, which is shown in blue here. This means that food and gas cannot move forward into the small intestine or back out the esophagus. GDV and this giant stomach are going to put pressure on the dog's diaphragm, which is the dotted line in this photo, the lungs, the major blood vessels in the abdomen, the major nerves, the spleen, and other digestive organs. And this is why GDV can become life-threatening. Dogs with GDV will fall ill very quickly and they will deteriorate rapidly. They might start by acting nervous, looking at their belly, or showing other signs of pain or discomfort. They'll drool, they'll pant, and they might attempt to vomit, but not get anything up. They'll have an increased heart rate, but their gums will be pale, which shows that the blood is not getting to the tissues properly. Then they'll become weak, collapse, and have very shallow breathing. If you see any of these signs, you're going to want to take your dog to the emergency veterinarian immediately because this condition can quickly cause death. The ER veterinarian will first take your dog to radiology where they will take an x-ray of your dog's abdomen so that they can diagnose JDV. They'll also give IV fluids so that they can treat the shock that the dog might be in. Then they're going to take the dog to surgery where they will decompress or empty out the stomach, untwist it, and then suture it to the abdominal wall in its natural position so that it will be less likely to flip on itself in the future. Now, GDV can definitely vary in severity and therefore the outcome will vary as well. It is very important to monitor your dog for the signs of GAV so that you can take them into the emergency veterinarian earlier on in the process so that you can decrease the likelihood of complications and death. Now, GDV is a scary disease, but the good news is that there are so many ways that you as a dog owner can prevent it at home. The first being be aware of the breeds and body types that are predisposed to GDV and monitor your dog if they are one of these at-risk breeds. If your dog comes from a breeder 
ask the breeder if they are aware of the bloat history of the dogs that they have produced. And before you buy a dog, if the breeder doesn't have this information, you might want to pass on that breeder and find a more reputable one. When your dog is uh, ready to be spayed or neutered, you might also want to consider getting a prophylactic gastropexy to decrease the risk of GDV in their future. A prophylactic gastropexy is an elective surgery where the veterinarian goes into the dog's abdomen and sutures the stomach to the abdominal wall in its natural position. This is going to decrease the likelihood that the stomach will flip on itself if ever it becomes extremely distended with gas and food in the future. Many large breed dog owners opt for this surgery in their dogs to decrease their risk of bloat. You're also going to want to feed your dog in a dish on the floor, not in one of those elevated feeding dishes as they can predispose your dog to GDV. You will also want to feed your dog multiple, so two or more smaller meals each day. This is one of the most important nutritional measures that you can take to prevent GDV. Then you might also want to consider adding water, canned food, or maybe a food topper or fresh food to your dog's diet as well. If you do add canned food and it's complete and balanced, you're going to want to make sure that you calculate the kilocalories and measure out each different type of food correctly so that um, your pet is getting the right amount of each food every day. And for more information on this, you can check out my video, how to calculate your pet's calorie needs and how to accurately measure your pet's food. If you're going to add fresh food, people food, or a food topper to your dog's regular kibble, you're going to want to make sure that they do not exceed 10% of your dog's daily caloric intake. And for more information on this, much, much more information on this, check out my video, treats, table scraps, and food toppers. You're also going to want to increase the time that it takes your dog to eat a meal. So some dogs that are predisposed to food gorging, you might want to buy a puzzle feeder or a toy that only dispenses a few kibbles at a time. You can also consider getting a breed specific diet that is designed for breeds like labs who like to inhale their food. And these breed specific diets typically have large, hard, uniquely shaped kibbles that force the dog to chew. Then you're going to need to wait one hour before um, you feed the dog after they exercise, and you're going to want to keep them calm one hour after eating before they do any activity as well. And again, always, always, always monitor your dog, no matter how big or small they are, in that time right around feeding to make sure that they don't show any signs of bloat. Believe it or not, Cats can get bloat too, but it's much less common than it is in dogs. Typically cats get food bloat more often than they get GDV, but both are described in the scientific literature. However, since there have been so few cases reported, we are unsure of the specific risk factors that are associated with cats getting bloat. But if you use preventative measures um, like feeding smaller meals and um, preventing food gorging, so using a puzzle feeder or toys for your cat, this might help decrease the risk of bloat for them. Thank you so much for watching this quick tips video on canine bloat. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Leave comments if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. And check out that video's description below where I give you a ton of resources on canine bloat as well as the scientific literature that I used to create this video. Don't forget to visit feedingravendoodles.com where I have my complete collection of articles, videos, and resources for you all in one place. Next time, we're going to be talking about a very popular topic, food allergies and sensitivities, so stay tuned for that. Say bye, Raven.